let me surrender this. There's no point in fighting this argument. I'm climbing an uphill battle. Never be starving, never be stuffed. But usually when we're craving something sweet like that chocolate, we're not meal prepping. Here's your container of fat, protein, carbs, already ready to go. I gotta grab a cutie. Hey, since you did that. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about snacking. How to snack well, how to reduce snacking, meal planning and snack tips, and a few ideas for healthy snack recipes. All right, if you're ready, let's get to it. So the whole purpose of this video is to give you a guidance on meal prepping and snacking to nourish your body and mind but to not make it too much physical work and mental turmoil, especially if you have an eating disordered background. Just a quick caveat, I am not a doctor or licensed therapist professional. I am a certified functional health coach. If you do have a disordered eating or serious struggle with food, I would highly recommend seeking professional help. It is not something to be ashamed about. I did it for a number of years and it's one of the crucial components that brought me to the place I am now and having a healthy mindset and connection to food. I'll talk a little bit more about my experience with disordered eating in a bit. And if you're interested in a more in-depth story and my recovery, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video on it. So coming from a disordered eating background, the practice that I use now with meal planning and snacking has to be the most sustainable and healthy practice that I currently do. So I want to do just a quick layout of what we're going to talk about in the video today. So first, part, what is snacking intended for? Second, how to structure your meals with snacks. And third, how to snack healthfully. The fourth one is all about snacking struggles. And the fifth one, we're diving in just a little bit to my disordered eating background and how I practice a healthy, balanced way of eating without feeling physically or mentally burnt out. If you feel overwhelmed and stressed out because of food, you're counting calories, you're tracking, you're trying to be healthy, you dive into the wrong foods, you're starving for half of the day, you're trying to do what's right. Okay guys, first things first. First things first? That seems like an odd saying. You get the idea though. Number one, what is snacking intended for? Snacking is not intended to fill you up. It's just designed to hold you over until that next meal. And let me mention, this is healthy snacking. This isn't just boredom snacking, doing it to boost endorphins or anything like that. This is designed to nourish the body and the mind and to keep you comfortable from one meal to the next. All right, I am getting ready to leave for Pilates. I am just a little bit hungry. I just had a snack of almonds, so I might have a little bit something to hold me over. I'll probably go outside and grab a cutie and then I'll be set. I gotta grab a cutie. Hey, since you did that. <laughs> The rain has destroyed our yard. Well, and these two have. Let's grab one of these guys, maybe two. They're the easiest to peel and it's so satisfying. We're not eating them quick enough. I should bag them up, put them out on the streets. Huh, guys? Do you like Yuri? What is that? So number two is how to structure meals with snacks. So this will vary person to person based on your exercise regimen, your body makeup, and your hormone levels. But what I like to do is stick to three main meals with optional snacks in between. So I'll have breakfast, maybe a snack before lunch, lunch, maybe a snack before dinner, and then I have my berry bowl at night just to cap out the night, make sure I have good enough blood sugar levels. I run extremely low blood sugar levels, so I try to make sure that there's something in the evening to keep me balanced throughout the night. Now those snacks are completely optional. I usually do that if I'm just hungry and I can't make it to the next meal. Now here's something to consider. If you feel like you had breakfast and only an hour or even an hour and a half later, you are hungry. There's a few things that you wanna check into. One, are you eating enough food? And by enough food, I mean enough nutrient dense foods. Are there plenty of vegetables, fibrous foods in that meal? 
Maybe you're hungry only an hour later because you're eating something that's way too small and that's not gonna satiate you until the next meal a few hours later. So if you're having a breakfast that's maybe two hard boiled eggs and a piece of toast with a tiny bit of butter on there, chances are if you're older than eight years old, that's not gonna satiate you until lunchtime. My go-to when I am making a meal, I'm gonna make sure that I have all three macros. There's gonna be fat, protein, and carbs in there. I also like to staple the meal around vegetables. If I know I'm coming into that meal hungry, I am gonna load it up with vegetables or fibrous foods to ensure I will be satiated after the meal. Another thing to check into is if your meal's plenty big, you're doing all the three macros, are you dehydrated? That is a huge reason for hunger, but in reality, it's actually dehydration. So making sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day so that you being dehydrated isn't going to cause a hunger signal. So one question I got on meal planning is how to do this without obsessing over food, calories, intake from hour to hour throughout the entire day. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in the last segment of this video on my experience with eating disorders. But, so chances are this is more of a mental component of the body and not necessarily a physical response to food. If that's the case, once again, I highly recommend talking to a professional and even doing some mindfulness and analysis of the body of figuring out, is this hunger? Asking yourself these questions, but I'll talk more about that at the end. One thing we do that significantly helped me stay consistent, not get over obsessed with the food is we meal prep. And when I say meal prep, we're not meal prepping. Here's your container of fat, protein, carbs, already ready to go. We meal prep a large container of vegetables, of proteins, so that it's readily available when one of the meal times comes up. Stefani, do you have any tips on meal planning, snacks, how to do it in a helpful way? First thing I do, hello, is ask myself, where is my protein coming from? Where is my fat coming from? Um, and then carbs. I, I think about carbs less, but I do think about them. My biggest thing is never be starving, never be stuffed. And so I try to keep my, you know, I mean, it depends on how many calories you're taking in throughout the day. And so, you know, let's say to make it a nice round number, you're doing 2000. So you would do, let's say three 500 calorie meals and then two to three 150 to 200 calorie snacks, which would get you right to your kind of caloric goals. Six and a half hours late. Find a balance of healthy to what tastes good and what you can realistically maintain and find something that you can, you know, carry on through life. I'm not a believer in fad diets. I'm a believer in lifestyle. And so find something that you can maintain for you know, years or for the rest of your life that tastes good, it's good for you. What are snacks that you tend to go for? My first snack of the day is usually almonds. Second snack of the day is a protein bar and third snack is similar to her berry bowls, but I don't do the almond milk. I do low sugar Greek yogurt with almond butter and raw honey. That's really all I snack on. I mean, the occasional carrots or whatnot, but usually the ones I just mentioned are, are my go-tos. Well, there you have it, folks, from the Man, the myth, and the legend. Thank you, Stephen Wolf. My pleasure. Okay, guys, we are going. Do you like this drawing that we did? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into the fridge. We don't have anything crazy in here, but this is what the situation is. So I have a salad every single day for lunch religiously. So we have a big thing of lettuce. We keep, you know. I made this in a video previously, but we keep stuff on hand. I throw it in a bowl with dressing, um, feta, and then Steven is really good about making batch amounts of protein. So all I do is just snip this up, put that in there. I like to keep fruit on hand. That's an easy snack. We have almonds here. We have our protein bars down below. And if I'm really feeling it, I will make some homemade popcorn, which is delicious. So easy to do. You just put that in a pan with some oil, heat it up, um, and you can use any kind of oil. It's not, you know, the highly processed ones that are in those bags. So 
that's kind of what we do as far as snacks. So the third thing I want to mention is how to snack healthfully. Okay, so we all know this and we've probably all done this. You get a Costco sized bag of snacks, bring it to the couch and you are just mindlessly eating. Now there's nothing wrong with doing this on occasion, but we don't want to get in the habit of mindlessly snacking. So an alternative way of doing this is if you want that popcorn or those chips, pour it into a bowl beforehand, put the bag away in the cabinet and then bring that bowl to the couch. And there's some science behind finishing the bowl of chips and being satisfied when you finish it instead of endlessly going for this bag of chips that you want to finish. So an easy takeaway is if you are gonna snack, make sure to portion it. And like I've said before, making sure you are drinking plenty of water and staying hydrated throughout the entire day. A lot of times our bodies are thirsty, but they'll send hunger signals instead and kind of trick you up. So make sure you drink plenty of water. And lastly, choose real food instead of processed food. So I am a sucker for protein bars, but most of the time, I choose real food snacks. Do a pear with some cheese, maybe hard boiled eggs with a little bit of salt on top, handful of almonds, carrots and hummus, celery and almond butter. There's so many options out there. And this just brought up something interesting. Snacks don't necessarily need to have all three macros. That's four. Snacks don't need to have all three macros, but you do ideally want two different ones. So either protein and fat, protein and carbs, fat and carbs, whatever that looks like, but they don't need to have all three. That's more important for the meals. Okay, the fourth part is snacking struggles. So one thing so many people complain about is craving. I'm craving fatty food, I'm craving salt, I'm craving sweet. There's a few things to consider with that. So one main issue that a lot of people aren't talking about is hormones. So whether you're on your period, about to start your period, or you were just going through some significant hormone changes, that could actually lead to these cravings. So keep that in mind when that's happening. In the work I've done, one of the main things, especially especially when it comes to periods in women is chocolate cravings. But usually when we're craving something sweet like that chocolate, it's actually because we're deficient in fats. So making sure that we're eating enough healthy fats usually will do the trick on reducing our chocolate cravings. So try that out if you are craving a ton of chocolate and a bite or two is not gonna satiate you. There's also a chart that I'll link below. There's also a really neat chart that showcases the vitamins and minerals you could be deficient in depending on what you're craving. So take a look at the foods that you're craving, see if you're getting enough of those vitamins and minerals or the foods containing it, and perhaps that's where the gap is. And a simple enough trick if you are craving sweet or salty, go for the real food first. Chances are, if you do that, it's still gonna satiate your cravings without having the excess junk from the processed food. So if you're craving sweet, go for fruits or even top something off with a little bit of honey. If you're craving salty, try putting a real really good quality salt on a hard boiled egg and see if that does the trick. Another question I had was resistance and temptation to snacking. And what I think the client was asking is, is this a temptation? Is this something that I need to resist or am I genuinely hungry and need to eat food? So let's check things off the list and see what it might be. One, water content. Are you drinking enough water? Are you hydrated? If you are, then let's check the next one. Have I worked out extra hard today or yesterday and my metabolism might be rubbed up? I might be hungrier than normal and might need a little bit of extra food. If that's the case, then try bulking up your meals until you are satiated. All right, don't mind the deodorant. It is what it is. We are heading to Pilates. If you watched my last video on my humble brag of parallel parking, the front. I'd say that's pretty good. Another thing to ask is have I been stationary all day and am I just bored? Especially with so many of us working from home nowadays and we're not distracted by colleagues coming in and out and work agendas that it's easier for us to go into the snacking in reality because we're just bored. And after all of that, if you are still hungry, go eat something. And I would recommend eating something that's healthy because you're gonna find out is this hunger or is this just a craving? And the final thing that I wanted to touch on was a little bit 
it into my disordered eating and how I've came to this place with healthy and mindful eating. So I will say it's been years and years of work of professional help, of family and friends helping along the way and doing a lot of my own inner work. I was bulimic, anorexic and struggled with overeating. Sophomore year of high school was really when everything started, when the anorexia and bulimia took over. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna dive too much into the details of my story, but many years passed, was still struggling with disordered eating. Some major life changes happened and I ended up switching from anorexia and bulimia to overeaters. And it is a real thing. It's not just, oh, I'm eating too much, you know, the generic person who just stuffs themselves or can't stop eating a bag of chips. It is a true diagnosis and something that a lot of people struggle with. I actually went to Overeaters Anonymous for some time in conjunction with working with professionals. During the time that I struggled with overeating, I converted to veganism and I'm no longer vegan, but I will say this was the first thing that gave me structure and peace of mind when it comes to food throughout the day. It gave me some guidance and control. You can't eat this, you can't eat this. And although I think too many restrictions can create issues. It was actually something that was very therapeutic and exactly what I needed at that point. I did veganism for a few years and that helped me sustain a somewhat healthy food practice throughout the day, especially considering from morning till night, food was the only thing on my mind. I was finally at a point that I could think of other things besides food or the next meal or what I previously ate. So this kind of was when I just moved back from Spain a little bit after college and the last last 10, 15 years have just been a journey of inner work and healing, working with professionals, getting down to the deep root of what's going on. One other thing I do want to mention, and it was a pretty pivotal mindset shift for me in regards to my eating background. And that is when I started overthinking, like, should I eat this? Should I not eat this? And it's all healthy food that I was choosing between, but it was like, well, I just ate this. And like, it was just when I started getting way too fanatic with it, when I knew that that, that was kind of an issue. So let me give you for instance, I have extremely low blood sugar. I actually had to wear a Dexcom for a long time. Shout out to you, Jenny, for getting that. That was like way before the days that anybody could just get a glucose meter, which I think should be readily available for everyone. Anyways, besides the point, my sugars drop really low. So I go into like the 40s, which most people go into a coma. And so at night, I need to make sure that I have plenty of food in my system, not too much carbs, but enough carbs. And I would lay in bed and I'm kind of hungry, kind of not, but it's been a few hours since I've had dinner. And I'm like, do I eat something? I don't want to, you know, and I was just overthinking the whole thing and I was finally like, let me surrender this. There's no point in fighting this argument. Let me go have something small and then call it a night. And I started doing that. I started to kind of release this overthinking and that has helped tremendously. So that might not be helpful information for any of you, but if you do have a disordered eating mindset, I would say that surrender really helped me as long as it's healthy food and you know, you can do a self analysis like, am I hungry? Have I not eaten a few hours? Like be realistic with those questions. But if it seems like a plausible answer to have a a little bite of something then might be helpful and my husband and I both work and have an experience in addiction. And one thing that I found is that generally people with addiction, there's some sort of hole that they are trying to fill. And we want some sense of control because chances are there was something earlier in our lives that we did not have in control. Food was an opportunity for me to give control and take control over my body. The more I started to pull back those layers with professional help and dive in and heal from that, I was able to move forward with food and not obsess about it. I also do believe that this is something that's gonna stick with me for life. I'm gonna look at food differently than someone who's never struggled with disordered eating. That's okay to me. This is all part of our journey and I get to utilize this to be compassionate and relate to others. So many of us are struggling with issues and we feel paralyzed. And I just want you to know that you are not alone. There is help and hope out there for you. And where I'm currently at is I eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. I don't overthink about anything and man am I proud of where I'm at, everything that I've been through that has led me here today. I'm confident in my body. I work out, but I don't obsess about it. I eat really good nutrient foods. And I will say this too, is eating nutrient dense foods has truly helped me be comfortable, confident, and happy with how I'm nourishing myself. All right, guys, I hope this helped in some ways. If you are struggling with any sort of food issues, snacking, meal planning, let me know in the comments below, or 
work, you have any ideas for future videos. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I know we've heard it so many times, but it truly does support this channel. I'm climbing an uphill battle in this algorithm. So anything you can do at all means the world to me and I'll chat with you guys soon.